All right, all right, all right. Woo! Life. 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 Yeah. There we go. Today, today, game changer. Let me tell you something. I have a guest coming on today, okay? Guest coming on today. This woman, her name is called Kelly Catron, okay? This woman is a fashion beast, okay? Let me tell you a little story, okay? There was a person in my life, very close person in my life, that wanted to get into the fashion game, fashion business. And I wanted to make sure that I hear a lot of stories you know, in the fashion business. Some people make it, uh, the drama, the sleaze bags, all the hell stories I would hear about the fashion game. And, and, and someone told me there's one woman in New York City. If you can bond with her, she is the, let's call it the, the Michael Jordan, the Steve Jobs, the Bill Gates, I mean, of fashion. You crack this woman, she will open every single door for you in the fashion business. Uh, and I said to, to the person in my life, I said, you know what? I said, uh, you want to get into fashion business? Then I'm going to get you to the best. And she told me that, listen, this is the person that I really want to work with. And I said, my goal is how do we work with someone who can get us results in the fastest time? I don't want to spend one, three, five, ten years, you know, wasting time, wasting years, trying to get on a catwalk, uh, trying to walk for brands. And then you're number 64 in line. We're just walking along and no one even sees you. How do you open the show? How do you close the show? How do you become a brand ambassador? How do you shake up New York City, you know? And let me tell you something. I met this woman and literally in the first meeting, uh, the person was, the, the model was wow, amazing. They had the X factor, had everything, but needed that door open in, in, in the fashion game. Uh, and in one meeting, literally it transformed her destiny in the fashion world. Um, I was managing the client at the time and uh, I'm gonna tell you, I give full credit to Kelly Catron because she opened every single door just like this. It was all phone calls, phone calls, phone calls, emails, text messages. And it really shows you that, which I always tell you in Fame Aishara's masterclass, who is in your inner circle? Who is your inner team? Who are the people that are gonna push you, drive you, make you excel? Not the people who are gonna drag you down. Not the people who have their own agenda. You know what I mean? You need those people in your ear that are only gonna be there to advance you in your career, make you step up and hold you to a higher standard. Yes, you'll get your ass kicked, yeah? Yes, it'll be hard. Yes, it'll be difficult. Yes, you'll think, oh my God, wh why, why is this person always like on my ass? They're on your ass because they love you. They're on your ass because they care about you, because they want you to be at a higher standard. And I can tell you right now, if anyone is watching right now, I'm giving my personal endorsement. You know me, I work with the biggest and the baddest celebrities in the planet, okay? From Kim K to J-Lo, you know, I've got a wide range, okay? And when it comes to fashion, if you want to break it in the fashion business, if you are a brand and you wanna kind of get to the next level in your career for your, for your fashion brand, if you want anything to know, this woman, hands down, I'm opening up the door for you, uh, and I give full credit uh, to my client who I was working with at the time, who uh, opened up the door to Kelly Catron. A huge eye opener for me because I'm an amplifier. You call me when you want disruption. You call me when you want fame. You call me when you want shit done. But when it comes to fashion, I'll be all honest with you, that wasn't my expertise. And uh, when I got introduced to um, Kelly, and I saw Kelly from, from just showing her magic uh, on the talent, and seeing results immediately, okay? Other people hustle, they try, they try and go to the modeling agencies, they try and do all that stuff. Before you know it, you know, years have gone past. You know, you've gone from 18 and now you're 28, from 28 now you're 38, and now you're pregnant, now you're like, well, whatever, the career's gone. You know, she was just like, bam, bam, bam. It's almost like she's Shiraz, but a female, in the, in the female version of the fashion business. You know, that's what a badass she is, you know? So, Vikram. Bring the, the, the legend. Let's do it. Kelly Catron, man. Let's have a real conversation and um, let's get it real. She's, uh, she's the real leader. Kelly, if you're in the house, give us a wave right now and I can bring you on real quick. There's my lovely lady. There you go. <laughs> live through this. Yeah, there you go. So go back a bit. Okay, so first of all, another introduction. Thank you for no. giving me your time. Thank you for giving me expertise. Thank you. The fame by Shiraz, you know, media beast <laughs> has to be humble when it comes to the fashion space. You know, you know I'm not humble, right? I'm, I'm loud and, and I'm cocky. But when it you, comes to me learning and being the student. You're humble. What's up? <laughs> okay, so Miss Kelly, first of all, okay. Uh, let's give a little introduction because uh, we're, we're being seen globally around the world. Okay. Um, uh, what you, what, what, a little bit of your background and then more importantly, I want us uh, for my, let's call it my Fame by Shiraz family, I want them to learn from the best. 
You know, if someone wants to get into the fashion business, you know, I know myself, I've got the biggest A-list clients. They all kiss your ass. Everybody loves you. Everybody worships you. Your word is from God. So I'm going to give that to, to the Fame by Shiraz family now. So first of all, a little introduction, and then let's go into some Q&A. Let's, 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 let's talk raw. I want the truth. You know me, man. Well, it's nice to meet everybody. Hey, you guys, I'm Kelly Catron. I'm the founder and CEO of People's Revolution. People's Revolution has been kind of a game-changing fashion, PR, branding, and production firm. Uh, and we specialize a lot in launching brands and also emerging talent. So some of the brands that I've worked with is Jeremy Scott for 13 years, Agent Provocateur for 15 years, Paco Rabanne, Vivian Westwood, Ben & Jerry's, um, Terry Mugler. I mean, you name it. I'm working with really cute kids right now, like Mimi Prober, Freak City LA. Um, do a lot of fashion show production and probably produce more fashion shows maybe than anybody in New York, for sure. Um, definitely the longest consistent running fashion show producer up until COVID. Um, also, I was on TV for the last 10 years, kind of exploring female entrepreneurialism and the concept of the power bitch, and then wrote two New York Times bestselling books called If You Have to Cry, Go Outside, and Other Things Your Mother Never Told You, and Normal Gets You Nowhere, which is kind of like a part memoir, part how to make it work in fashion or in business book for usually women and gays. Those, that's usually, I use my crowd are like chicks and, and, and uh, LGBTQ. That's my main thing. If a straight guy comes up and tells me that he likes my brand, I'm convinced his wife probably just dragged him into the living room to watch TV or something. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, so AKA, you're, you're a female fashion beast. Okay, that's what I call it. Okay, so you know, so, so so let's 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 talk about um, first of all for people out there right now who want to get into the fashion business. Okay, given that where we are today in COVID and you know all the things right. that are going on, you know what's your perspective? Let's start there, and then I'm going to talk about some brands, and then we'll bring in some Q and A's. You know. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how you see the world. You know, for some people, I think it's a really good time to turn inward and figure out what you really want to do and what you really have to say and. And, and how you're going to navigate through this incredibly huge divide and changing world that's happening right now. And a lot of times, like for my daughter, she's almost 19. She's at school at Parsons. And of course, she's freaked out because she's taking school her first freshman year on Zoom and, you know, all of that stuff. And I'm like, Ava, this is a great time to be a fashion student. It's the best time you could possibly have. You're not missing anything. And the world is completely like shifting and it's like there's an earthquake and everything's like burning like the whole fashion industry is completely upside down right now and it's going to take a minute it you know this is we haven't even seen what's going to happen yet well you wait till after christmas and you see what's going to happen it's going to be a shit show so wow. the industry is going to it's going to take time to repair itself it just is that's one so if you are somebody who wants to turn inward and think should I be a woman's designer? Should I be doing ethically sourced goods now? Uh, where is the fashion industry going to be as far as their imprint right now on the planet? You know, we know that they are the second highest polluter. You know, it takes 2,100 liters of water to make a fucking t-shirt, you know? And people are going to Zara, buying it for 14 bucks, throwing it out, getting another one. Like, it's time for everybody to just like, stop and figure that out. I mean, animals, like, I fucking wrote about that 10 years ago, like, you're using fur and selling leather. Well, good luck. You're fucking disgusting, in my opinion. So um, that's a whole other thing. So turn inward. Or if you're an entrepreneur and you're really crazy and you want to bust some moves, you know, my recommendation would be to focus more on an item than the concept of a collection and focus more on selling things yourself. Um, Lawrence Lenahan is a guy who invested in Airbnb and Pinterest and we were at a table with some designers one day and they were talking about how shit their sales team were and like how shit their PR was and blah, blah, blah. And he just like threw his hand on the table and he's like, I am so tired of hearing you blame your misfortune on your team. Why don't you get up off your ass? If you had to sell a shirt to stay alive, what would you do today? And so I think that type of thinking right now is a really important thinking if people want to find success. You can't sit around and wait for a store to come look for you. And if you're making 42 pieces of clothes and you think anybody's gonna buy more than two or three from you right now, like you're crazy. So if you think about it, Diane von Furstenberg sells a wrap dress, right? Ralph Lauren sells a polo shirt. You know, North Beach sells a coat. Levi's is a five pocket jean, you know? 
So it, it that, figure out what it is that you have that's better than everybody else, and then just hone in on it, hone in on it, hone in on it, drive it, drive it, drive it, sell it, sell it, sell it, live it, live it, live it, get other people to believe, and then move that product like that. Look at Kanye West. Like, his clothing line is, like, kind of a joke, let's be honest. Like, but Yeezys are a huge item, you know? It's one of the biggest revolutions in footwear after airs. So, like, with him, he just needs to sell a sneaker. You know what I'm saying? So I really think that this is the time of the item because when we're all sitting home, I mean, unless you're maybe Princess Chantal of Greece, nobody's thinking like, what are the 10 key gowns I need to buy right now? Like, that's not gonna happen, you know? So what is the thing people are gonna, you know, we're living in caftans. We know that loungewear and athletic wear are at an all time high right now. Sport is totally in. And to be honest, if you're American and you're living in the United States, I mean, unless you went to like Central St. Martins or something, the luxury game right now, in my opinion, is in Europe because those houses are super old. Missoni, Fendi, Givenchy, Balenciaga, Chanel, which looks like shit. So hopefully nobody's buying that collection. This that's like big boo. I'm sorry. Like no, Chanel we want it raw, man. We want it raw. Be honest, man. That's what Fame by Shiraz is about. We don't kiss ass here. We just yes. That's yeah, my <laughs> professional comment. Um, am I going to be on Real Housewives? Yes, I am. Um, so, 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 yeah. so, so what you're saying is, is, is um, instead of waiting for that phone call to uh, walk on a catwalk or you know, become a model for a brand, create your own brand. Right now, go direct response. You know what I mean? Direct, direct shipping. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah well, I'm saying like, for, figure out what you have to sell and why what you have to sell is better than what's already there. And if it's not, then figure out a story that's going to make people want to buy it. And I would stay more focused on items. So for example, if you're doing fragrance, I would do three instead of six. If you're doing a clothing line, maybe start with three or six t-shirts or something that's easy for you to move and sell instead of thinking that you need to do, I mean, most collections are anywhere from 24 looks. So that there could be three to eight pieces or items per look, right? So most collections go from 21 looks to up to 62 looks for some of the bigger houses. That's like a whole lot of products. And I, I have a question. I have, I have one of my Fame by Shiraz graduates, uh, Brittany Winfrey, her name is, okay? And uh, she took my master class and she's got a line of blazers, okay? Mm -hmm. Nice blazers. What advice do you have to, uh, for someone like her who has like a blazer collection, right? And she's yeah. trying to break it out. What, what would you say? Well, what's the price point? Who's, who's the blazer for? Brittany, speak. She's there right now. What, 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 what is the price point of the Blazers? Um, and who is your customer? You know? Retailer, okay. what's the cost of goods? What's her wholesale? What's her retail? And who's the customer? Is it a Theory girl? Is it a Balenciaga chick? Like, what's the price point? 139 Is that, okay, I can see what she's saying, $139. So, Brittany, if it's $139, what's your cost to make one Blazer? Let's check and make sure that her margins are right because there's no point in trying to sell something if you're not going to make money. Oh, yeah, I like that. Right. Margins are a big, uh, a big problem for a lot of young designers because they're spending a lot more than they realize. They're not including shipping, the cost of the label. You know, you have to put a care tag inside the garment. What you're going to pack it in, is it going to be plastic or tissue? How you're going to send it, cost of shipping what your charges are for places like Amazon. I mean, Jeff Bezos is a fucking, he's, he's a thief. I mean, 40% of goods, you better, you better, you better have a 300% margin if you're going to give up 40% of it. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy, you know, type of margins. I mean, even Etsy now is like, I don't, I, people can tell me what it is now, but I think it's like 30 or 40% to wow. sell on. Yeah. So if you're selling a necklace for a hundred bucks, like, Amazon and Etsy are taking 40 of it. And let's, it let, let, let's run some examples, right? So let's just say the blazer were to cost, uh, let's just say $50 and she's selling it for uh, 150. Is that good or no? She should be selling it more. Well, it depends if she's going to sell it just by herself, then it's fine because her margins will be okay. Um, but let's say that she's going to sell her blazer for, um, uh, would we say $139 and it costs her how much? It's, uh, she said, I, I read it has $139 is the highest one. And then the, the lowest one is $109. $109. So let's say it costs her $50 to make that. Yeah. She's going to wholesale that blazer to like Neiman Marcus or 
uh, patron of the new or, you know, different stores, she's not going to be able to make it. She's already going to be negative because there's no way that she can sell her jacket on Instagram, you know, for like sell it to the store. Like she's selling out Instagram for $139, right? Yeah. Off her website. But when the store buys it, they're going to want to buy it for $50. So if it costs her $50, now she's working for free because she can't, she can't download like lowball her own retailers. You follow me? Got it, got it, got it, got it. So, so, the, so, so, so if someone is cost, something is costing 50 bucks is, as your, uh, your, your cost price, you should be selling it. If you know you're selling it either direct or you're selling it through third party, it should be 300 or is that too much? Well, no, it should be more than that, really. I mean, oh, wow. I mean it, it just depends on who you're, you have to decide if you're going to wholesale or retail. One of the ways to go around it is to maybe sell your own things on your own site and then if people want to come to you, right and they want to wholesale that product with you you can either offer it in different fabrications so a, a cheaper fabric and that'll help you get your price points and your margins down you can go and look at different producers it's like pizza you know a piece of pizza is like five dollars the pie is 20 that's how it goes in fashion it might cost you 50 dollars to make small batch blazers but if you have an order of a thousand blazers the price is going to go down do you see what i say do, or do, do, factories because Minimums are different. Do you, do you think for someone like Brittany, who's starting off on herself, she's, uh, you know, kind of independent, it's the first time she's doing this, is it better to start off on your own and then build your base and then go to other places to kind of split your margins? What, what would you suggest for someone who's starting out? What's the purpose of the blazer? Like, what are, are they made out of denim? Are they prints? Are they African? Like, who's the customer? Like, who are we selling this blazer to? Female boss. A female boss. Yeah who's not going to work anymore. I like that. That's why I love you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love you. <laughs> Laser. Yeah. I mean, if I were she, to- She ain't going to work, so you know, she's going out on a date. You know, she's if doing I something. If I were to sell a blazer right now, that's what I would do. I would, I would show it in some fun ways. Like, I would show it like a girl getting ready to go sit at a Zoom call, but like with a nightgown on and her buttoning up and going like, there's nothing better than being boss, right? But like, you know that like nobody's wearing like really structured clothes, but like that could be the one garment that you have, right? Like for me, it's like a caftan. Like my one garment is a caftan because I can sleep in it. I can use it at the beach. <laughs> I can go to a cocktail party in it. I can pull my hair back. I can leave it down. That's my one thing. So if it was, you know, me, I would just be like, let's blaze. So I would play with the concept of the word blaze, blazer, let's blaze, trail blazer, COVID blazer. Like, you know, everybody has less money right now. If there's only one thing that you're gonna have, let it be this. It's better than a leather motorcycle no jacket. No animals were killed in the making. You can dress it up. You can throw it on with pearls. You can fucking put like a glitter rock and roll scarf. You can put punk rock buttons all over it. Maybe she could offer like little button kits, which are really cheap to make, like little pins that say like, you know, vote or uh, vote for love or, you know, there's a ton of different stuff that you can do with that, you know, and that's, that's what I would do. If, if I, I would kind of come up with a concept of blazing and the word blaze. So from getting stoned to, um, you know, blazers to trail blazers to being a boss and having that really be the one item and showing it in real ways, you know what I mean? Like, I think it'd be really cute to have like a girl in a pair of like agent provocateur underwear with a tight, like a nice white Oxford shirt with a really cool blazer. And then you do like a pan on the leg of like Helmut Newton kind of going up. And then she's just like on a Zoom call. And then like she takes her glasses and goes like, you know, live wow, in my bathroom. So you're talking about sex it up a bit, make it a little bit cool and yeah. sexy. Right? Also, it's like, you know, everybody's like, I mean, like that CNN guy, half of the people, like we are only seeing like this much of people these days, you know? So I don't know. I would really, you know, I would really, really push that whole concept, you know? Because that's, a, that's actually a good breakthrough, actually, the Zoom blazer. You know what I mean? The Zoom blazer, because you're right, you're tapping on that whole market. Yeah, because it's the one thing you can just have it like, you know, like right here, like I'm in my dining room, sorry. But like I could just have that, you know, on you know on my chair and like if i had a really important meeting and i'm just like messing around speaking to my assistant and then she's like oh you have to go on a zoom call i can just grab it and like put it on you know and i think if you find really funny ways to help tell that story i think women will want to get it because they'll be like oh my god all my blazers are tattered you know they look like shit. like i just need one thing in my life to look good right now 
you know, just one thing. Everybody's stuff is like. You know what? You, actually, that that's a really good idea because then she'll own that lane of Zoom. Everyone's doing Zoom calls. Everyone's doing Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. And then if she price it, if her price is right, like you said, the margins are good. Um, I'm sure she might send you a DM or whatever later, but you know, or once her margins are good. Out of yoga, let's say that you're doing yoga somewhere, like out in a park or on your yoga mat. All you need to do is like put that jacket on. You can go to the grocery store. You can, or you can go anywhere, and it is great for a date. Like think about it. If you're gonna go on a plane, what are you gonna take? That's kind of. I'm a carry-on girl. I take like one Louis Vuitton tote, not even a freaking rolling bag, okay? And that's it, you know, I have like two black shirts, two pairs of black leggings, two black caftans, a leather jacket, like a vintage leather jacket, and a, a blazer, I guess. Like on Top Model, when I was on Top Model for five years, I wore the same black Donna Karen blazer. I had eight of them, but that was like my go-to because it's also really good because I've been skinny and I've been heavier or whatever word people are using for curvy, fat, overweight, whatever. The great thing about a blazer is it does a lot for your silhouette. You know, if it's tailored nicely, it makes your shoulders, even if you're a slouchy person, it makes you look great, kind of really has some nice take-ins here. So it gives you a little bit of waist, whereas a caftan, you know, you get lost in. So it's also it can be a very um, streamlined, uh, silhouette for for somebody who wants to look good. Love that. So, Brittany, you know what to do. Uh, I've tagged, uh, pinned uh, Kelly Catron. I'm sure you guys can work some out. Now, let's talk about uh, where are we at with Met Gala, New York Fashion Week, London, Dubai. What the hell's going to happen? Well, I mean, the Met Gala was a joke. Let's just be honest. I mean, it turned into fucking Disneyland. I mean, it's kind of a joke. I personally have never... I'm a big fan of, of museums, for the most part, except for all the looted goods that they hold. But from a fashion perspective of things that were donated, I don't really know any history of people running and robbing um, <laughs> items from like Yves Saint Laurent's house to put in a museum. So I think everybody can feel safe to go to uh, that. But I think the Met Gal Gala is it's a really small, pretentious club. And American Vogue does not call the shots of what's going on in the world today. And they always change late. You know, people are like, Black Lives Matter. And then Vogue's like, OK, we need another black model besides like Ducky or Naomi. Oh, oh OK, let us get some black models quick. Everybody come in, you know, or, you know, oh, veganism is in. Oh, OK, great. Let's let, But, you know, this is like years after everybody else has been doing it. You know, Vogue magazine is the kind of Himalayas of big ass fashion business, but it's only for luxury. You are gonna be hard pressed to find somebody going, oh, you have a hundred million dollar brand in LA that makes $24 t-shirts. Like we wanna put that in our magazine, they don't. So the other Vogue publications like British Vogue or Italian Vogue are much more uh, edgy. Same with uh, uh, German Vogue because um, of Berlin and the influence there. But, um, and you know, uh, Vogue, you know, uh, Arabia is very cutting edge for Arabia, but it's super like 1955 compared to British Vogue. You know, the way Rihanna looks on the cover of Vogue Arabia is a lot different than she's gonna look in Italian Vogue because the protocol of Islam versus Christianity and what women can wear and how that's perceived in certain cultures changes. So each of these magazines are, are filters. But I, I think that the Met Ball, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'll, I'll be honest. Jeremy Scott, I represented Jeremy forever, and he was never invited to the Met Ball. Not and Jeremy Scott is uh, Mos Moschino, right? Yeah, but when he got to Moschino, he got invited back to the Met Ball. But before that, nobody invited him to the Met Ball. And it's true for a lot of clients. Paco Rabanne never invited to the Met Ball. I mean, I was his publicist forever, one of the greatest designers in the history of fashion. First person to use a black model in a fashion show, created chain mail dresses because birth control was creating sexual warriors with women. Never, never. The only people from Vogue that would even go to a show were like Hamish Falls, you know, and Sally Singer, because there's a cool section of editors at Vogue who do, um, who do support younger talent. But for the most part, it is not a publication for young emerging talent. And that's just I, the truth. I got, I got one of our uh, Fame by Shiraz masterclass graduates. Uh, his name is called Sir Quincy Dash, badass publicist out of London, huge celeb clients, huge brands. He has a question. There okay. it is. 
uh, what are your thoughts on everything virtual brands not wanting to show at fashion shows anymore? Um, well, I'm, I support that, to be honest. I mean, you, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that Fashion Weeks became a joke. Okay, and for the last four or five years, I've, by the way, nobody loves to do a fashion show more than me. So yeah. with, with the exception of, again, Rick Owens, okay, Yoji Yamamoto, Ralph Lauren, Oscar de la Renta, Moschino, any of these brands, they have to create a moment, right? They have to create a visual moment and ring the bell. This is who we are, this is what we're doing. The problem for me has been, they, they ring the bell six months early. So can you imagine somebody going on Jimmy Fallon, a band, right? And they play a song and then Jimmy Fallon goes, this is great. And they go, yeah, it'll be out in six months. Do you think anybody's gonna fucking buy that? No, they're not. So that's what fashion is then. It's like, hi, Zara, hi, H&M, hi, ASOS. Hey, all you people that are gonna knock us off. This is what the smartest, coolest kids in the world are thinking are the trends. They're great, Forever 21, whoever. They just go around, they go, oh, plaid, okay, plaid, mohair, ba 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 ba. They buy it and they knock it off. And so now everybody's in sync, but all the creative risk and all the money that it costs to put those ideas up, they're being pirated. They're being pirated by the paparazzi on the end of the catwalk. There is no publishing that protects designers and their collateral images that they're producing. Whereas when people used to play a song, the publishing world was formed to make sure like, oh, you're gonna play that song on the radio, pay the artist a quarter. Whereas everybody's taking this content, they're throwing it all over the world. They're selling it to elevator companies in Guangzhou, China. So they have some content. Oh, look, here come pretty Western girls. So the, the industry has been in disrepair for a really long time. The next thing you go to the fashion shows, where are the fashion people? It's like NASCAR. I said this a long time ago, let's just sell tickets. And as a matter of fact, I started to sell tickets for rows four, five, and six and donate them to a charity of like widowed Tibetan orphans and kids in India. Because by the time you're in the fourth row, you're not in the game, right? You're just not in the game. You're sitting in the fourth row, whatever. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares, okay? So those first couple of rows are super important, but there's so many different ways to get to people now. You know, so if you have buyers who aren't buying clothes from the shows, you have fashion people who don't wanna go because every year, the staff keeps getting thinner and thinner and less and less. For the last two years, Americans really have not been traveling as editors and stuff to Europe because their companies don't want to pay for it. And everybody's streaming it online anyway. So everything needs to be rethought. Yes, there should be really big, great fashion shows. But to be honest, this COVID Paris Week shit was pathetic. Like people on a boat, like waving with like blonde hair six feet away. It just seemed like this is like 1884, not 2020. Like, yeah. what are these people thinking about? There's like 8 million people who don't have food right now. You know, so I think everything needs to be rethought. Like, what's the message? What do we have to say? And if it is pure luxury, like a Chrome Hearts or a Lara Piano or something, then you better bring the fucking luxury story and make it here's another question for you so if given the fact that the entire um fashion industry has been disrupted because of uh, covid everything's uh, bad, gone choice, south. bad buyers bad choices outdated systems retailers who are gouging the designers i mean i don't know if you guys know what they do to the designers at these retailers. i have no idea tell me i'm your student i'll tell you so um, first of all, is they get the best price that they can get. Secondly, if you don't deliver, they give you a manual that's like this thick. So for every mistake that you make, like if it doesn't show up at Pier 69 on January, between January 21st and January 23rd, between the hours of, let's say, 12 to 4, 8 to 5, guess what? You get points off your sales. So deduction, deduction. If your tags aren't right, deduction. If they can't move those on the floor, Okay, then they want to they want to do markdowns. So now you have stuff that you're selling on your website, let's just say to make it easier to $100. But at Normit, uh, uh, Nordstrom's or Neiman Marcus, it might be $59.99. So now do you think Tesla sells a car for one price here and a car for one price? there? No, right? So you're not even in control of that. And then if they can't sell it after they like pull your ass apart over and over and over again, then what they want to do is send it back to you and oh, take God. the profit of your sales. 
So, and they want you to credit them the money back. Plus, if you're going to be like in their Christmas catalogs or you're going to be in their New York Times ad where they go, oh, Coach Times, you know, Alice and Olivia or whatever, that's a pay to play. They expect you to pay and co buy the advertising. A lot of the stores that you go to now, when you go into like Dior at Saks, that's not a Saks store, it's a Dior store. They're paying rent because guess what? They don't want somebody named April. Who's like, hi, how are you doing? I'm April, everything's great. No, they're like, hi, we're Dior, right? That's the voice of Dior, right? Uh, so they have their own employees. The people that work in those stores are not Saks employees, they're Dior employees or YSL. So, so if we go to a Nordstrom's or whatever, uh, Bloomingdale's and you see Chanel in there, Chanel is paying, the, the, it's almost like they're a tenant within Nordstrom's. They're a tenant, right. And then they also, it's also like a, like a hair salon with a, a percentage of sales kickback. Got it. Okay. And yeah. now retail being dead, mall being closed, you know, over here, I went to uh, Westville the other day, Century City, but that's a ghost town. It's sad. Town. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't like to see an industry like, listen, this is, I spent my whole life in this industry and it's been awesome to me. And I know that fashion will prevail. And I know that the people that are kind of legends and icons now, a lot of them just want to leave. Like, they're just like, I'm done. I'm moving to Jamaica. Good luck to everybody. I'm out. There's another group that, are more like game changing transformers. So we're here and we're, we have one foot in this world and one foot in this world. And then there's like a whole other bunch of kids, okay? That they don't give a shit about any of these systems. As a matter of fact, they wanna smash them up. And I'm all for smashing things, but you better have an idea of what you're gonna do with broken glass. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, so yeah. I think- Now what, what, now what about, um, you know, I'm a young, uh, let's just say a young female or a male m model, and I want to now, you know, become a fashion model, or I want to make it in the fashion business. Where, where do I stand now? You hire you. <laughs> because <laughs> fame by Shiraz masterclass dot com, <laughs> of course. But what, what, you as a fashion guru, I mean, how do I pitch myself to a brand, and how do I get to be the? Look how many people want to be a fashion model and all that kind of guy or girl. girl doesn't matter. You, you, you need to get attention most of it there's there's a couple of things one have your mom or your friend take a picture of you in either a black tank top if you're a woman a black tank top or a shirt dress like something you know a white tank top and a pair of skinny jeans or a pair of leggings very little makeup hair pulled back if you're a guy just wear a black v-neck tee um maybe do one without a shirt on because a lot of times they want to see like what you're packing as far as like um six packs, stuff like that. People are asking about curvy, same thing, same guidelines for plus size models, and non plus size models. There's just because somebody's curvy doesn't make them a model. Just because somebody's trans does not make them a model. Just because somebody's a five foot 11 girl from Eastern Bloc doesn't make you a model. You have to actually be able to model. And there's something be beyond taking a good photo and actually knowing how to work with a group of people, knowing how to be quiet, knowing how to follow direction, knowing how to change your energy. You know, so I would say if people are serious about modeling, you know, you better <laughs> go to acting class. You better sit in front of there and make sure that you know every one of your angles. You better, you know, make sure that you have some. Um, you know, you better have some sort of a spiritual practice or something you know, to help round you out. Like my daughter right now, she just got, by accident, I had nothing to do with it. She ended up in Vogue because she did a photo shoot for one of my clients who wanted to save some money and also wanted to shoot at my house and it was COVID. So, you know, she came here and, and it, the shoot just happened to end up in Vogue. I didn't place it. A lot of people are like, oh, Kelly Trump put her daughter in Vogue. No, I had nothing to do with it. And, you know, since Ava was young, agencies have called and, you know, she's like, mommy, like, what should I do? Okay, she's five foot eight five foot seven, five foot eight. So that's like, nah, even though there's a lot of models now that height that come off of Instagram. So that's one thing to answer your question, Instagram, social media. Second thing is take your own photos and send them to a reputable agency and just send packages and also send emails and hope that somebody's gonna, you know, open them. So if it's an agency like the Lions or Society or Kate Moss's company or IMG, Elite, Next, any of those, yeah, those are all great. If it's some weirdo guy in like Austria who wears suspenders and has a, you know, a penchant for little kids, no. Do not believe anybody who's not with a credible modeling agency. You know? What about uh, another question from, uh, from, another question from Quincy uh, in, in London? 
um, who, uh, you know, the badass publicist. His question was, it's a good question here. Uh, what are your thoughts on influencers being used as models instead of real models? Um, Great question, by the way, Quincy. Love you, brother, sitting there in London, famed by Shiraz Masterclass. <laughs> I guess it depends on the brand. I mean, I think that most really big, big brands still use models and then they pepper. So like they frost the cake with real models and then they sprinkle it with different flavors du jour, right? Because again, we already know that the fashion industry doesn't give a shit about anything except for tall, white, pretty, skinny people. That's just the fucking truth. And they'll tell you that they feel differently because people will start to call them out, you know? And so they'll go pick them up through influencers. One, because, you know, they're cheaper. Two, because they're not gonna take away from the model concept and they can still check, check the boxes, right? Like, where are all the Indian girls? American Indian or from India? Where are those girls? I don't see any of them. I mean, You're like, right, you know, think about that. No Middle Eastern, you know, no, no Persians, <laughs> no Indians, no Middle Easterns, you know what well, I mean? American, no indigenous people, no, pretty much no Peruvian girls, very few Mexican girls, tons of Brazilian girls. Wow. But, you know, where are the Guatemalan girls? Uh, I've never seen them. So, you know, this industry is archaic. But at the same time, if we were in Nigeria, would they feel that they had to use a thousand white girls there, they, you know, no, they wouldn't. It's Nigeria, they're selling to African people. But the United States is a place of communication. The fashion industry is um, very exclusive. It's very racist, okay? Very it's, racist, wow. Totally, you have to admit. I mean, it's not. I mean, if you go to a library and there are books there, you have to say there's books in the library, right? Mm. So, there's so, so for me, so me then, so, so then, hold on a minute. If, if this is the case, then this is where the breakthrough comes, right? Then while this whole COVID's come and the reset button is here, it's like creating our own rules now, right? That, uh, I've got another girl, one of our girls, uh, Marcella. Marcella, wherever you're at, uh, very beautiful Latino, very powerful, female boss, all that kind of stuff. This is something that they have to take in their own destiny now then and, and, and own it and start marketing themselves and branding themselves and doing that and owning that lane for the Latin American market. Because you're right, when you do go on those, um, uh, on those, those, those cat, all the fashion shows that I went with yours, I mean, you helped me out. I mean, you kind of, uh, you know, we backdoored some talent your way, but normally traditionally, I remember you, you, were, you were giving me a little haircut. You have to walk this way. You got to do one, two, three, four, five. I was trying to like do the Shiraz backdoor, right? I can sign the deal, get the shit done. But I remember you, you, you instructed the talent and there was a whole process behind it. One bad model can spoil the whole cabin. So if you're doing a favor for somebody by putting you know, their client in or, you know, I used to have a ton of Russian guys that used to offer me like $80,000 to throw their girlfriend on the catwalk, you know, because she wants to be a model or whatever. And I never did it because if you have a wonky walker, <laughs> it's like a comedy show, you don't want to be a wonky wonker. So if you have a wonky walker on the catwalk, you know, it throws the whole cabin because all of a sudden we've all seen those fashion shows. The girl comes out and she's all like, Ugh, and everybody's like embarrassed for the brand. Now nobody's no longer, you know, thinking about the clothes. They're looking at this poor damsel in distress on the catwalk. So. And the other thing about race on the catwalk is I used to tell my clients, like, I don't want to use one black girl. I don't want to use one Asian girl. You want, let's look at a global concept of beauty, right? Let's look at a global concept of beauty and then let's cast from a global concept of beauty. You want to use one or two black girls, fuck yourself. I'm not into it. I'm not casting that show. Let's either do it or let's just say, hi, I'm Oscar de la Renta. This is my bridal show. Guess what, kids? I'm not doing black trans bridal. Now, is that nice to people in the LGBT community? Probably not. But does Oscar de la Renta have, uh, for his bridal line, it's a private company. You know, Tiffany's does not become Cartier. You know what I mean? So he has, people have a right to do what they want with their brands. What I think people need to recognize who are out there trying to do a difference, get the power. Because if you have the power, like look at the hip hop world, right? And let's connect that back to the Met Ball, all right? Go for it. There were no hip hop, run DMC, Flavor Flav, never invited to the Met Ball. You know, the, you know, uh, fucking Easy E, Dr. Dre, do you think, you know, Biggie, Biggie and Tupac, they weren't invited to the Met Ball, 
Okay, they're not. Then all of a sudden, what happened with black and Latina artists from, you know, they started owning it. And they're like, no, like, I'm wearing this fashion, like Cardi B and her Birkin bag collection, right? They don't care. They're like, this is my shit. I work, I make, I'm going to rock this. And next thing you know, they're blowing sales up. And what are the Europeans doing? Like, oh my God, we need a black designer. Where, where are we going to get one? We've kept them out of the industry for the last hundred years. Oh, wait, Virgil Abloh. Oh, he's good, right? He's, yeah, let's get him in here. You know, so I say go get the power. You know, go make your own following. Go make your own thing. Because if you invent some shoe that everybody wants to wear and every fashion editor was like, oh, this sucks. And all of a sudden, you're selling 10 million shoes, right? Yeah. Then, then you have a hit. People are going to have to deal with you. Got it. So, so the, the, the bottom line is you've got to take your destiny into your own hands, right? This is your time. You know, there's no, there's no excuse. You've got to train. You've got to focus. You've got to know your art. Like you said, it's not just having a pretty face. That, don't, that, that ain't going to move the needle, right? Listen, if you are getting into modeling, you should have a really good understanding of modeling since the 1950s to the present. You should look everything up online. You should look at every runway show, you know, of the last 30, 40 years that are all archived in places like show studio, Nick Knight's place or on Vogue runway. And you really, really, really should understand that. You should look at all of the biggest, you know, cover shooters from Francesco Scavullo to Stephen Klein to Mizell to Dick Avedon to, you know, Mary Ellen Mark to Roxanne Lowett to, you know, all of these great, great stylists, Patty Wilson, Ariana Phillips, like all of this stuff, like you need to understand who these people are. You need to understand how they made a name for themselves and you need to see what they brought. Like there was a great supermodel called Omira who is Dominican, very androgynous, did a lot of stuff with, you know, Gautier and stuff. And she was always like the warrior model. Like she would always get all the other girls organized. She was like selling Andro and she knew how to work her brand, you know, and have a brand, you know what I mean? Like, stay in your brand. If you look at Christy Turlington, she's always elegant. She's always timeless. You look at Cindy, healthy Texas girl. You look at Naomi, long-legged, always, even no matter how much she was hanging in, in, in Africa, British. She was always selling London. You know, Kate, rock and roll heroine, right? Yeah, it's true. So they had their name. Yeah, yeah, of course. They had their thing. And if you think about brands, it's the same thing. You know, it's the Air Jordans or the swoosh or uh, Jeremy Scott, it's very loud in color and playful. Costa Bajac, stuffed animals like Papa Rabanne, Chainmail, Vivian Westwood, corsetry, pirate boots. Like it comes down again to those few items. And you can see like all the conversations that we've been having here, they all uh, kind of come back to these tenants. Got it, got it. So listen, I, I want to bring you on as a regular guest if we, we can make this happen because honestly you you inspire me because you're like me you just it's, it's the real deal it's no filter it's like let's let's get this done and more importantly for me with the fame by Shiraz masterclass is how do I add value you know if people are uh, investing in my masterclass and learning from the best tricks that I've done over the last you know two decades then I want to add value to them and and support these people and and give them the best of the best in the business right and someone like yourself <laughs> is so open and raw and I want everyone, uh, I, put, I pinned up the uh, Kelly Catron's uh, Instagram there, if you click there. Uh, your website, what's your website, Kelly? I don't, I, people probably don't have a website, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. I, it's, I just, you can go there, but there's nothing there. The reason, I'll tell you why, the reason I don't have a website is when you do PR for fashion clients, um, all of the writers that you contact and all of the work that you do, it becomes a map for anybody to be able to go in. Like, let's say that I'm representing Jeremy Scott and we have a new brand who's gonna be the competitor to Jeremy Scott, right? They yeah. just, oh, guess who wrote about Jeremy at Vogue? Oh, we should send this for this person. So like that thinking is a very private strategic thinking and we keep that to ourselves. We let our clients publicize our work by posting it on their own websites. We don't need to be sitting there going, look how fierce we are. Of course I can get press. <laughs> I wouldn't be in the business for 30 years. You can't be a shit publicist. You can, but not for more than three or four years. Got it, got it. So listen, Kelly, thank you so much. Honestly, well, you, know, you, you, you coming in today um, and joining, joining the live, it's something from, from my side, I've, I've, I've made a commitment to 
all of uh, my, the people that are following Fame by Shiraz, the people who take the masterclass, that I'm going daily every day. Uh, I haven't missed a day, thank God. It's been, how many days have we got now, Vikram? Coming up for three weeks now. It was almost three weeks now, Kelly. I made a, a, um, a, a promise to the team here that I said every day, no matter what, I'm going to take out 30 minutes, even though I've gone almost close to an hour now, uh, to add value, you know, because I believe in people like yourself, you know, that taught me many things in the fashion business. If you surround yourself with experts, you surround yourself with the right people that are in your ear, not the negative people, not the bad people, not the people who are going to direct you on a wrong path on your life. And then you really screw your career up, right? You right, make right. one piece of advice from the wrong person and now you're derailed. You're off the damn fame bus. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's hard to get on that bus. So once you're on it, you want to kind of maintain it, you know, and be good to the people that are there for you, you know? You know, I think that a winner, I came up with this line. I think I did. A winner is a dreamer who doesn't quit. Thank That's you. what I like to leave everybody with tonight, you know? Or the band that plays Madison Square Garden is a band that played the shit bar in New Jersey and no one was there. But they went to the next gig. And then they went to the next gig. And then they went to the next gig, right? And you're going to fail. Like you, you just hour, you know, there's just too many lessons to be made. And there's no way that any human being has the complete knowledge set, you know, downloaded. I mean, unless you're like, I don't know, a saint or something. But for the most part, you know, my, the reason that I really like my book so much is that I had a fucking stupid life. The only smart decision that I've really made in like the last 25 years is becoming the mother of Ava and buying the house in the country that I have now, which I'm so grateful for because, you know, I've been in an okay place for this ridiculous thing, you know, but, you know, I do a lot of stupid things, you know, and people will tell you that that's true, you know, so a lot of it is just trying to figure out how to balance it. But what we really want to figure out more than are we going to be famous? Because I've been famous and I personally, I didn't really like it, to be honest with you. I, it made me very uncomfortable. I didn't like being in Target with people following me around and carrying me. Going, ah! I was like, oh my God. Some people like your friend Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian, when they're in front of a camera, they're like. Let me, like let, 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 let me tell you something. Kim Kardashian if she's not getting photographed, if she's not getting in the news, it's a fucking panic attack, man. I'm like, relax. I'll give you the drug of fame. I used to put the damn drug in the ass. Right. I, mean, I swear I get, to God, daily. And I'm I like, get, oh, no, no, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. God damn it. That's how I create Famous Charles Masterclass. See, I Why think do you think the butt's so big? It's the fame. It's fame damn injection. I think my point. Every day. And still not satisfied. Fuck. Still not satisfied. My, How more famous can God make you, man? You're so my, big. God damn it, you're so famous. Oh, no. Turn now. My, Another, one. My, Another one. Swear to God, man, I can say that damn fucking truth. Bring the fucking lawyers on. I lived it. I was the one who was doing the damn injection. Bring it on, lawyers. I'm ready for you. Well, so I had the I, injection. I was pumping that damn butt for fame. Well, you know. God no, damn it, man. It winds me up when people say, oh, fame, fame, fame. I know it. Been there, done that. God damn it. Been right. there. That's well, why I keep the fame by Shiraz and the fame by Kelly. Come on, man. Let's let's shake up the fashion business. I think I think that the thing really that's really important more than just wanting to be famous, which I understand. I mean, because I think if you want to be famous, then you know that you're special. Like most people who don't think they're special don't really want to be famous because they're like, why would I want to do that? I go watch a cheese sculpture. I'm not interesting. So I think that I think that the most important thing is like, what do you really have to say? Like, what do you want to say? You know, if if it's like I love ducks. Okay, that's your thing. You love ducks? Go make a duck brand. I'm really, you know what I mean? I yeah, have a right, yeah. but, you so know. listen, we, I, I need to bring you on more, more often. I really love this conversation. You inspire me. You inspire our followers. I want everyone to go follow Kelly. She's the badass. She's the real deal. God right. bless you, madam. God bless you. Thanks for your time. And more importantly, <laughs> thanks, for your, thanks for your decades of experience that you're sharing with the Fame by Shiraz team. And anyone who hasn't taken the masterclass, God help you. Anyone who has taken the Fame by Shiraz Masterclass, God bless you. Peace out to you tomorrow. Love you, Kelly. Thanks so much.